Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Anybody that's new, welcome. So today we are gonna do two DIYs and we are going to make a light up Jenga block um, cross. We are gonna be using tumbling tower blocks, Jenga blocks from Dollar Tree. You can find them in the toy section. They come in a brown or blue pack. It doesn't matter, they're both the same and they're both 72 count. You can order them online if you're in the U.S. and get them shipped to your store uh, for free. Or you can sometimes get a coupon on DollarTree.com that sometimes they have a $5, $5.99 shipping fee. Um, if you sign up with their for a newsletter, sometimes they send you a code for free, um, cheaper shipping. I am gonna use Wellbond. I buy it at Lowe's slash Rona. You can buy it at Hobby Lobby. Uh, thank you for Nikki for letting me know that. I'm in Canada, so that's where I buy mine is Lowe's slash Rona. I would suggest using an L-shaped ruler. It just helps keep the blocks straight as you glue them together. In this project, I already did a couple, um, a couple pieces already glued together, just easier to do. Um, and then we'll build around pieces on it. So we are going to start the L-shaped ruler, just keeps them nice and glued. Oh, I'm just gonna show you. When I do my gluing, when I put two pieces together, I just keep moving them up like that, another two blocks like that, and so on and so forth, that it just keeps them nice and straight. Now you are gonna need six rows of two and they're just gonna be flat, just like that. There's six. You're gonna need two rows of three flat and two rows of four and flat like that. Now we are gonna be other pieces and glue them, gluing them on as we go. Um, usually I have them pre-glued, but just to make it easier, I do suggest getting a pen and paper. You might want to draw the cross out. That might help you a little bit better as well. So we're going to start with one piece of Jenga right at top. And then we're going to take two pieces that are already glued together and we're gonna put it right in the middle and I'm gonna glue as we go along. I might start, um, I might stop the video um, in between just for gluing time. So as you go along that they glue evenly and straight and you're just gonna glue it on there like that. Next section we are going to do is two and we're just gonna glue it i'm just gonna move this up a little bit i don't like moving them when they're glued together and we're just gonna glue a little bit of glue here and glue it just like that next two pieces uh actually we're going to take just another separate piece of jenga when i'm gluing them this the single ones i'm just gonna put them halfway point kind of like half in the center Then we're going to move on to two pieces. And I keep dabbing excess glue off.
now we're going to add one block here and one block here, one block here, and one block there. I think I'm just going to glue it when I pause it in a sec. Then we're going to go down. We're going to take the two, two rows of four and we're going to glue it right on the end just so you can start seeing the cross through the blocks. While these are still just newly glued, you're going to want to stick one piece down here before it becomes fully dry. So then you can finish off the shape, the inside shape of the cross. going to take one block on the side going to stick it like this on the side then we're going to do the other side Okay, now we're going to take the two threes. Once I put it together, I usually like to leave it for, it takes a while to, I'm going to leave it overnight, but just whatever glue you're reading, please, or using, please read the back of the bottle just for, um, for gluing time. I wouldn't suggest using hot glue only because hot glue does not seal the blocks properly and I'd only use hot glue if you're just gluing a couple pieces on but it still does not seal properly and doesn't hold and it will, depending on the temperature where you live um, if it gets very hot or very cold it can fall apart. Okay. And then the last two pieces are just gonna be glued in there. And then I'm gonna let that dry overnight. Now that I have it all glued together, you can stop here if you just wanna do the simple cross um, and then paint it. I'm gonna do, add something and keep going cause I wanna do a light up one. But just be um, mindful that when you have the well bond or pretty much any glue that you use, there might be some leftover little shiny spots. So when I paint it later, whether you use DT glue or you use a uh, stain that you will see the little spots. So you can just take a little buffer and go on the little corners that you see the shiny spots so then they don't show through once you paint it. And then you could use a piece of jute rope, put it on the back, and to conceal it, or you can still hang it there for it if you wanna see it. And once you have it on the wall, you won't be able to see it, and you can just use a little bit of hot glue, I would just to get it down, and then a little bit of uh, wood glue, just to keep, make sure it's secure. And then that would be, this side would be the back. But we are gonna move on to the light up part. And you're going to need, I'm just going to show you, just some DT wood cubes. And you're going to need six two cubes glued together. There's four, five, six. And then you're going to need two with just three cubes glued together. And before we paint them, we because I'm just going to paint the blocks while we do it as well, is you're just going to put it here put two here, 
You're gonna add three there and you're just gonna center it just a little bit there. You wanna make sure you have a nice outline to put the lighting on. So just like that and just another two down there. So what you're gonna do is just glue those on right on the back. <laughs> now um, we're gonna paint it. So I am gonna use some uh, dark walnut. I did start painting it and I totally forgot to start a video. It's been uh, one, it's been a long day. So I did glue those on like I showed you. Uh, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna do the front and the back obviously. And I'm just gonna use the stain, the stain I bought from Lowe's, but you can paint it brown. Um, this is the kind of color that I wanna go with because I want like a, I guess like a rustic look. And I think it's gonna be good with the lights just being the rustic color, but you can paint any color you'd like to match your decor and I'm just gonna finish that painting off and then I'm gonna make sure and let it dry overnight. All right, so I left it overnight just to make sure it was fully dried and that you're not gonna get anything on you only because you're using the um, uh, stain. Now, the total amount of blocks all the way around is 40 and the total amount of cubes is 18. Now I wanted to show you the difference. So the front you can notice there's no really there's no really glue marks because you sand it, especially with uh, stain. You can see the glue marks there. I didn't um, I didn't sand the back at all. Only for the fact is that you're not going to see it. But I just wanted to show you. Even if you use the Dollar Tree uh, paint, you will notice some marks like that even though you paint it over and it's more solid than the stain. But you will see those. So I do suggest. Uh, sanding the front just to get a nice look on it and without seeing those marks. Now I want the cross to light up so when we hang it on the wall you would just see the insides. Now I'm going to use these tea lights. Now I bought them from Amazon and I guess I didn't read the instructions or the description because I thought they were the 20 count and there's only 10 on each one. So this is why I left two spots open. I am gonna glue them down and you're just gonna make sure that when you lift the, if you need to change the batteries, that it's accessible this way and you didn't glue it that way because they will fall out or you can access them. So I'm just gonna show you. I guess you could lift them that way, but it'd be much easier keeping the flat open this way and I'm gonna glue them kind of like this. So I am just gonna hot glue this down. We are gonna do something to the little lights a little bit later after we get all this glued on. I am gonna use, <clears throat> excuse me, I am gonna use um, two packs of this, one on each side. And I'm just gonna hot glue it down like this. You're just gonna have to hold it as you go, as you know the hot glue. I'll start one side off and then I'll finish the other half on camera. You wanna keep the wire, as you know we don't have any light happening yet and this is gonna be the first spot here. Just so it's not long as we go around, I'm just gonna show you without. Just gotta make sure it's glued down. And you're gonna try to keep, just waiting for this piece to glue down. Um, you're gonna try to keep it flat and keep it more to the edge all the way in, not on this side. 
all along the inside here as you go all the way around. And you're gonna do the exact same with the other one. Now, if you have the one that has the 20 count on it, you can use that, which would just have to be the glue the one on instead of turning two on while you have to um, glue them on. You could use the battery pack ones. I'm just trying to see here in my drawer if I have a battery, the battery operated ones and I don't have one on me. I think this part would be wide enough. Um, the only suggestion I would do is that when you see it on the side, it might be, you'd have to see to make sure that the actual battery operated one is not thicker than the blocks because otherwise it's gonna be lopsided a little bit. So just be mindful of that. All right, so I just brought it in the bathroom here and I just wanted to show you how much it lights up. I've only put the one string on it, but I am gonna put the second one on it. Now, I really loved how that looked and I'm sure you guys really like it too. It gave a nice definition of the cross on the outside as well on the inside. So for the second one, I'm just gonna show you here that I just looped it around went all the way to the corners and you'll see the extra little gobs of glue. You just want to make sure that you keep the, the wire securely down and it just looped right there. <clears throat> now, if you already have, uh, if you have the one that has the 20 on it, then you guys are in luck. You only have to put the one, you can leave just one on if you want. Um, I want it a little bit brighter and I still want to change the color of the lights, but we're going to put the second one on. I remember placing it properly down. It's gonna go like this. So it's gonna be turned upside down like this one. I'm gonna wrap it around like that. And the exact same idea of hot gluing it and going down. So you'll see this one here is there. And with putting the second set on, wrapping it around this way, I like the idea of it kind of being in between the other two light ones that there'll be an extra light in between. And when you go down, there'll be an extra one down here and just working your way all the way around the cross. So now that I have both the lights on each side all the way around done, I want to change the color of the lights to more of a more of an amber color um if you've seen my jingle block um fireplace i did something similar with the fireplace which i'm gonna do now and i just want a different color it's just a little bit whitish i guess if you want to call it for me um that's why i want to do it amber and all you do is just add a little bit i don't want to paint that is just some DT paint. This is just pumpkin orange. And you can see right here, it just gives it a nice little orange or I guess orange kind of glow to it. So I'm gonna do the rest of the lights and just a little bit of orange paint. So now to hang it up, I'm just letting the paint dry and then I will show you what it looks like with the orange. You can do the exact same thing. You could use a thinner jute rope. I just had this one on hand I was showing you earlier that you can still hang it, obviously make it smaller. I'm gonna just use it because I don't wanna have any um, any rope hanging, like it's kind of like on its own. And you're just gonna take, now I just have this kit um, just hanging, hanging, uh, <laughs> I guess picture hanging stuff. And they come with the little um, the little twisty ones. So I'm gonna use that and also came with the little rope. You could also use the straight one across that has the little teeth on it. I didn't have one of those, I was gonna use that. But I'm just gonna, and right here the thread on it is short enough that it won't go through the Django block. It just don't, um, just make sure that you don't uh, screw it too tight. Uh, but looking at it i'm just gonna have to i'm gonna do it off camera because i need my head over here and i don't want to put my head on the back of the camera for you to use if you do have a little drill bit which i do have that i might just use on my hand drill um you're just going to want to screw those in right there 
So I did use uh, my Black & Decker drill and I used the 1 16th just to get the hole started. Once the hole was started, it was easier to turn in. As I was doing it, I did realize that you could actually put them in the wood cubes here as well, similar to that. You could put them both on this side. I was just trying to conceal more of the wire so you don't see it at all. Once I did get them in, I just used the hanging wire and twisted it around and made sure. I'm going to show you here with paper because it's hard to see with the other the tea lights there. But just like that. I already tested it out in the bathroom so you don't see the wire. I'm going to turn it on and we're going to show you what it looks like. So it's more of an amber color and it turned out really well. So let's take you over there and let's see it finished. All right, so there it is. It does look a little bit lighter than it does to my eye right now. I think it's just because of the, the camera setting with it filming, but I think it turned out really well. Let's get started on our second cross. All right, for the second DIY, we are going to do a freestanding cross. We're gonna use 112 Jenga blocks. We're gonna start with the top of the cross. We're gonna do three across and you're gonna need seven of those, seven rows. And they're just glued flat. You're gonna glue them like that once you got them all. I pre-glue them just like I said before so the video is not super long. I will glue those off camera. Then we are going to do four rows of 10 flat. And we're gonna center that. When we glue it, we're gonna center, there's gonna be five this way and five that way. We're gonna center it right in the middle in the four rows and that's 40. Then we're gonna go back to the three across flat and we're gonna need, and you're gonna center it, sorry, right in the middle. And you're gonna need 17 rows of the three flat, just like that. And we're gonna glue this together. Now that I have it all glued together, I'm going to paint it. I am gonna use some gel stain from Lowe's. It's called Dark Walnut. You can use DT Paint too. What I do suggest after gluing it is just taking a buffer. I'm just trying to find my buffer here. And I can't find my buffer. Oh, there it is. Taking a buffer in case any of the glue came out um, in between the Jenga, only because once you paint it, even if you stain it, you are gonna see some spots. So I suggest doing that first. And while I'm using the stain, you get these little round plaque boards from wood shapes from DT. And I'm gonna use that because I wanna add on to a base to it. Once we get those done, we'll move on to the next step. All right, so I wanna do a crown of thorns around the um, the cross so i have a garland bead i know just recently i just saw that it came out with the <clears throat> excuse me the fall ones so i just want to wrap it around a bigger style because i want to just loop it over the top of the crown and i'm gonna do probably i think one two three four Let's do six, so make sure it's round. <clears throat> then I'm just gonna cut it with wire cutters. Now I always can add on that piece after. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go along and I'm just gonna cut all these little balls off. Cause we're gonna add something to it after. I'm just gonna do that off camera. So I took all the little beads off it, and by the looks of it, I didn't realize that they're attached. So I'm just gonna attach the wires, the piece. Now one piece is 24 inches, and it looks like they're gonna be roughly, I just cut it, I guess, in the same spot. And I'm just gonna wind it here. So one might be a little bit shorter and it's just in sh short this much here. Gonna, all these beads are gonna go flying. I'm gonna put two ends together and you're just gonna kind of twist it. Doesn't have to be tight. 
guess better just take one. I'm going to take the longest one and twist it around. I don't want it too tight. And you're going to do that all the way down. Once you all, once it's all twisted, I'm just going to make a circle. And then I'm just going to flip one around like this. And then you're just going to go to the other side and take the other one. Flip it around. I'm just going to finish this. So I went back and I unwinded it again and I made it the ring a little bit smaller. On certain parts, I just took a tool. It was just something from DT. You don't have to use this one. And then I just went and opened it up in little spots for it to look like that. Just so it was round enough to hang over top that you'll be able to see like that. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, guys. Then we're going to grab some toothpicks to make the thorns. And we're just going to... So you're probably going to have to do a lot of... Um... Oh, I didn't even plug this in my hot glue in. But um, I mean, you're seeing my idea, so... I'm just gonna plug this in. Once you have it like that, I want this little piece to peek out a little bit more. Okay. Once you get the little pieces of toothpick, I'm gonna show you this way. So, so you're just gonna hot glue my hands are not cooperating today. Little pieces like that sticking all the way out. And I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue and stick them in there. Now I got all the, the toothpicks hot glued on. I think they uh, it turned out really well so far. Uh, we are going to paint little toothpicks to blend in with the garland. And we're going to use the DT Espresso Brown. I tried a couple browns and I think that was the one that came close to the color. If you can see, let's see if I can put it there. Came pretty close to the color of the garland, the wire. So I'm going to paint the rest of the though, uh, rest of those. Uh, while I do that, we should glue the cross on to the plate in the middle and we are going to use well bond for that we're not going to use hot glue and i'm going to finish that up so i got it done and i got it painted i think it turned out really well you can't really notice that they are uh, toothpicks i do have to do a little touch up with paint that i did miss uh, before i do that i want to add lights on it um what i want to do is you're going to leave this much out anyways, and then we're going to stick it at the back of the cross and conceal it behind the cross. This part here. And I'm going to count. So I got 10 lights on it. So I'm going to kind of, I guess I'm going to have to put it all the way around like this. So it is a little bit of a time consuming to wrap around the, the lights but I just think it's gonna look really cool when it's all wrapped all the way around and I'm gonna do that off camera now that I got it all wrapped on it might be a little bit easier I'm thinking because I didn't know if it was well actually I didn't know until after I got it done I thought lights would be so cool on it so that's why I probably would have wrapped it prior but that's okay it just gave me the spacing for and it wasn't too hard to do at all to wrap it around and I just kind of figured with the spacing of the lights was kind of like a clock since I had 10, 10 of them and just thinking, okay, well this half, I kind of want to do five lights and the same thing with the other side, but they're not totally even, but that's okay. So I did miss some of the 
some of the toothpicks, like I said. I'm just gonna turn this off so you guys can see. You can see the silver little wire and I'm just gonna paint right on that wire and just to blend it right in with the thorn crown, just with the thorns. Um, I just think it will just turn out really good. So I'm gonna finish painting that. Now, if you can't find these, I guess this is the one time I say can say that I'm glad there was only 10 lights on it because I know I always want the ones with 20. You can use the battery operated one. I think DT sells those ones, the fairy lights with the battery operated. And you can just conceal it on the back of the cross that you won't see it. When I do place this on, and I'll show you later, where I glue it and we keep the top flat open, I am going to paint right on it so it blends right in to the back of the cross. And even with the fairy lights, if it's a box, you could still do that just so it's not sticking out in the back. Let me get this painted and then we'll move on to the next step. Now, before we add the um, crown of thorns, we are gonna put some rocks just on the bottom here around. And I just got some river rocks from DT and I'm just gonna hot glue around the reef, or a reef, <laughs> around the cross on the bottom. All right, I just wanted to show you. So I glued on some rocks right here and I obviously didn't glue that one on. Um, so they're all glued down. Now we're gonna move, I'm just gonna switch the camera view. Next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to put some material cloth of the cross. I'm just, I don't have any material on hand that's white. And so I took the satin cord from DT. Basically, it's just ribbon. You just get a few, uh, a few, not, I think maybe half a meter, if that. I don't even think it's that long. And I just took one piece. Now, when I did it, you can see a little bit of it, but it was very bent when I took it out. And I just lightly ironed it. I'm just going to fold it over like that and just give it a little bit of a touch of hot glue. You don't want to do too much because it'll go right through the ribbon. And just to sit just like that. With the crown of thorns, you're going to take the wire and it's going to be at the back. And I'm just going to turn this around that you're going to hang it on an angle that it's going to go right in the back and I'm just going to turn it around here. And you can just glue it down just like that. And then I'm just gonna paint, like I said. And I think that'll just fit perfect, just the way it looks. And I'm just gonna play with the wire here. So I try to get the crown a little bit more closer to the Jenga blocks. This way you can't see the wire going down in the back. Let me get that done and then I'll show you what it looks like all done and I'll turn on the light. All right, guys, here it is. So you're gonna notice the cross on there and I just thought I glued it on because we were just at the end. It's just DT had these um, crosses and I just thought it added a little extra to it. And I just think it turned out really cute. I just really, really like it. Let me just turn off the light so you can see what the crown looks like lit up. So there is still a little bit of light in here, but I just think it turned out really well. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, but I am going to do one more cross idea that I did have. Um, and I'm just going to switch the camera and we're going to start on the third DIY cross. All right, for our third DIY, we are going to use 86 blocks and we're going to start with the bottom part of the cross. You're going to need eight of these and it's three flat. So you're going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Next thing you're going to need is we're going to do the middle. I always find it's good to write down, um, just makes it easier as, um, as I show you. You're going to need nine stacked just means they're stacked on one another. Like I've said earlier, you're gonna need two of those. So that's 18 and you're gonna glue them right over the block on each side, leaving this part open. 
Then the next level we're gonna do is you're gonna do four flat and you're gonna need four of those. So one, two, three, four, just like that. So you're just gonna, I'm just building from the bottom up and you're gonna glue them together as you go. Then you're gonna need two of these and it's two stacked, just like that. And you're just gonna glue them right on over top the last block on each side. Just like that. Then you're gonna need two of these four flat and you're just gonna glue it right on top like that. Then we're gonna need another two and these ones are five stacked, two of those. And you're gonna glue them right on that end. And the last two rows are of three flat and you're just gonna top it right on like that. And one more, just like that. And that will be a total of 86. You're gonna let that glue, just make sure whatever glue you're using is you watch the drying time on it, leave it flat to dry. All right, so I have it glued. I let it dry all day while I went to work and it's solid. I noticed a little crack that didn't seal properly there and that's fine. I'm not gonna do this one rustic, I'm gonna do it white. So if you're new to my channel, I've started back a few tutorials ago, just um, changing the shape and making, I guess, corners more round in certain areas. And I using um, spackle, spackling. It's just basically hole filler for the wall. And I know DT sells it, because I've seen a couple posts where someone was using it to make those dessert looking things. So I'm assuming the spackling is a similar idea. This one I just got from Rona and it's kind of pink, but it actually turns white after it is uh, totally dry. I'm just taking a knife. You can buy some tools from DT for like clay and stuff like that. And it just helps even out the, also the level when one block's a little bit longer than others, as you can see, it's almost like uh, spreading butter on a toast, if you want to call it like that. Um, and it just also fills in the little holes that you might have, like I just showed you, for example, that one, or there's a little crack there. And I'm just gonna do the rest of it. And usually when the pink's dry, usually when you're just doing a little layer like this, as opposed to some of the bigger corners in my previous tutorial, these ones usually dry pretty fast. Once I let the spackle dry, I did buff it. Nail file from DT, buffer from DT, and just a sanding block. And it just makes everything nice and smooth on the side here. Now, the great thing is about when you use the white, it's a lot easier because when you do the blocks, it just, you have to do quite a couple, a few coats of the white. So I am gonna do a couple coats of the white to make it all nice and white. And then we'll move on to the next step. All right, now that we, Paint, finished painting it. So I think I did about three coats on there. Depends on how much you want to cover. There's, you still can see the block just a little bit, but I'm okay with that. You can get these sheets of um, gems, stickers, uh, glitter rhinestones from Dollar Tree. They come off in strips like that. And I want to go around sorry and just do an outline all the way down the sides Oop, I think I just put it a little bit crooked I'm gonna press it down till I'm done just on the outline all the way around. I'm not on, we'll even do the bottom as well. So I got all the rhinestones on, all the way around, the strip stickers. 
the next thing I want to do is I want to add a light on this one. Uh, why not? I already did two. So we're going to flip it over. Now on the point, I'm going to use the same ones that I have and they only have uh, the, 10, the 10 lights on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hot glue them. I'm going to do the points hot glue just like the other ones with the flap open which is this side here I'm gonna have to wrap this one around that I bring it here and I'm gonna show you the points in a second that we're gonna do so you're gonna start it like that the lights you are going to once you get I get that hot glue on the point will be, so I'm, I would drew out a little cross and figured out I have 10 of the lights, one point here, one point here, one point here, one point here, another one here, 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 here and here and that will bring you to 10 around now if you have 20 you can just draw um i just want them even so the light is even so if you have the 20 uh tea lights on there fairy lights sorry you just have to do extra going around all right so i got it glued on and this is i just wrapped the wire around like that just so you can see it on the edges and here's the 10 points. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's equally um, divided all the way around the cross. Now I was gonna do some wings, and I think I'm gonna do that. Um, seems like my ideas changed for this as I went along. I just a piece of foam board. I wouldn't use paper. I think it would get too floppy. Um, you could do cardboard, but if you have white cardboard, might be good. You just need something sturdy. So I just freehand drew this. Now the thing with the whiteboard is, you know that you can't um, you can't cut them with the scissors, and you need a really sharp exacto knife. And I'm not going to trail you around. Um, so I did one already. I'm going to need to make the second one here. Oh, this is my cutting mat. So I already cut one out and the reason I'm going to keep this is because when it glows I want to be able to see through the cross and I don't want to block that part. Now you're going to need two of them so I will just finish with that one. Um, I'm going to flip it around. Once you have it, actually I'm going to show you this one. Once you have it cut out for example, I don't want to stick my head under the camera so I hope it's uh, level say this is already cut out what you're going to do is just level it right there and you're going to do the inside just trace it with a pencil and i'm just going to do a little bit more than that just so it's not sticking on the edges Ooh, well, not a straight line and i'm going to cut that part out that's where that is so when you going to glue it on after you're going to see right through it now why I, I have this is once you have that cut out I'm probably gonna have to erase these lines because I don't want to stick my head under the camera you're going to draw another line on the outside well actually that's totally off but <laughs> um, the reason why you're going to draw that line on the outside like I have on this one is is because we're going to add some feathers. Now, DT has, oops, they have these feathers, but they're too big um, for what I want on here. I do have these in my stash. And I'm sure um, if you want to look at Tumu, Timu, that app that everybody's buying from, I'm sure they have an amazing selection of feathers on there. Um, these ones are from, uh, here in Canada, they're from the Buck or Two. Now, those are pretty random stores. 
I know a few cities have them, so I'm not sure. And it was like $2, I think, a pack. And I find, I just wanted to use them because they're just a lot smaller. So the point of this line is you don't want to glue anything past that line. Because when you glue on, you need some parts to glue on. And it's not going to gl be glued on flush because of the wire, but it, it will hold. But you don't want to have the feathers on there and then the feathers attached on the wire. So you just want to make sure, even if you have to cut some of the little feathers at the end. And I'm going to probably go through and pick the smallest feathers. And I'm just going to hot glue them, probably figure out which way that one will probably work better. And just a little bit of hot glue it down a bit. And I'm going to work my way all the way around. Now that I did the one side of them, the side facing forward, I am going to do the back. But the next thing we're going to do is, I'm just going to glue this one down. It's a little bit loose. Is we're just going to glue it right on top of that. It's not going to be totally solid, but you're not going to see. Now, after I glue it on, I'm just going to check my ends all the way around just to make sure that there's no feathers, um, spots that are empty, and that I fill it in properly there. When I was gluing on the feathers, I just, I actually, just put layers and layers over them and I try to keep the white sticks concealed so you wouldn't see like the constant white sticks on them and then on the back I can use the longer feathers even the DT feathers on the back can work well that you just want to conceal the back on there now that I got them glued on, I think they turned out really well. I did touch up a few spots around the side just with some extra feathers and I did the back like I said I didn't I just put a little bit just to cover the board so when you are cutting them out um I'm just going to show you the one here that I have that I did like that you could just do pointy you could just make it all round because it is just going to be covered with the feathers anyways and then you can still see the lights in the corner I'm just going to put something so you can see the nice glow that you will have on the back of it now I don't have one of those boards from DT, but I did have one like this that I used with the other cross that DT sells, which is a little bit wider. I'm just gonna use this one. This one is from Dollarama. Before I continue to do the base, I do wanna glue it on first. So I am just gonna glue it on with some Weld Bond. So I left it on just like that. And I'm going to use some Mod Podge. I am gonna use the gloss one, so just be mindful when you're using glitter it's better to use the gloss than the matte it'll just make it more shiny um i just buy these ones in bulk this is just from um dollarama dollar tree here only has the little packets that come in a bunch of different colors so i am just going to use the silver on the base and paint on the mod podge and put the silver on the bottom now the reason like i was explaining prior in the last cut uh, i wanted to make sure that this was glued down solid to the board only being that when you use glitter if you try to glue something on it it doesn't stick um, flat flat to the base and that's why i wanted to glue it on and then just do the glitter around it all right so here it is uh i still have a dining room light on and you can still see when you put it against uh, a back of a wall or anything like that i have the bristol board up right now but uh, you can see that it lights up nicely. Uh, I was gonna add a little bit something to it, but I just wanted to keep it plain and simple. Which cross is your favorite? If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Please give me a thumbs up and happy crafting and see you guys soon. Bye.